Welcome, dear listeners, to episode 36 of the Empty Rooms of Gorski Manor. Within the cellars of Gorski Manor, we have begun our descent. The lower worlds, or realms, or levels. For I am not clear at this time as to how they want to be addressed. For they have opened to us welcoming us into their never-ending path, willing to show us the way, going deeper and deeper to places that will help me remember things we already know, and in this remembering, discover something unknown that was there waiting in the shadows waiting for us to notice them. I had returned to the first cellar's floor to find the ladder from the stage director's box beneath the theater stage of the manor. It continued downwards, a definite gateway that had not been there whence first I came upon it. My candlelight highlighted something drawn in white, there on the wall behind the ladder, the rune symbol Rido, drawn in white chalk, a magical substance compressed of single-cell fossils, ancient life from so long ago, eons of time combining together, year upon year, layer upon layer, pressed and fused in alchemical transformation, creating a strong life force energy. Rido, the rune of the quest, the journey of ritual, the witch's rune. It was drawn on the wall, its back bone stroke, long and extending downwards into the black silence, pointing the way to go. I followed its suggested course and slowly crawled down the ladder. Its wooden rungs turned to polished black with a most interesting scent meeting me halfway down a lovely scent, woodsy and mossy, the dampness of the cellars above subsiding as I reached the bottom. A cavern of sorts met my eyes, filled with the most beautiful mushrooms everywhere, long caps of all shades of red with white spots growing from the walls, growing down from the ceiling, and growing in gentle rolling mounds along the cavern floor. As I stepped forward, my feet felt the softness of this cushioned, moss-covered earth. Many of the mushroom caps glistened and shined, reflecting the light of my candle enhancing its little light, making it shine larger and stronger and grander. As I walked forward, I saw baskets here and there filled with freshly picked mushrooms. Someone is growing these mushrooms here within the cellars. Hello, you. I heard a woman's voice call. Hello. I responded tentatively. From behind some very large mushrooms, much taller than myself, came a little crooked old woman, her bent form, it seemed, from years of gardening. She wore a long cotton dress that matched the color of the mushrooms, stained with fresh earth at the bottom. She held a tattered apron gathered in her hands, filled with a bunch of cut mushrooms, 
just harvested by the strong smell that filled the air. Two long gray braids were tied together behind her back. Who are you? I asked. Why, it is me, she cackled in response. Me? I questioned, confused. You, silly, was her reply. I was about to continue my questioning when she said, Save your candle, love. There is natural light here. She came close to me quite quickly and blew it out before I could react. I was about to complain, expecting to find myself in darkness, but all was fine, as she had stated. I could see perfectly well, yet I could not see a light source or any shadows cast by it to give me reference of where the light may be coming from. All was just seeable. Might it be the mushrooms? I thought. Come help me, love. Always work to be done. She urged me forward as she took a few wobbly steps to a basket. What is this place? I asked her as she waited for me to hold a basket as she proceeded to release the mushrooms she had gathered into it. Mushroom Shire, I love to call it. My little hole in the ground, she said with pride. I am the supplier of magic mushrooms for the mystics, dreamers, journeyers, travelers, and the such. It takes a lot of magic to keep this manor rolling smoothly. That is for certain, she explained. After she had filled the basket, she stood up as best she could and rubbed her back. Oh, oh, my back. Sometimes I wish they would just grow more on the ceiling. Oof, what an ache it does give me. Oof. I am about to do right now for a sit-down, she said, inviting me to join her with a wave. We walked over to a flat, big, long mushroom at the side of a wall that did so resemble a bench. Come along, love. Put that basket over there. She pointed to a group of baskets full of mushrooms in a doorway, ready to be taken somewhere, which I did. She sat upon the bench mushroom with a plop and a loud sigh of relief. Oh, May I please ask again, what is this place? An excellent place for a little tale. Come, sit by me and listen. And could you please rub my back for just a moment? Oh, it is so sore. along on this journey I never knew it would take so long I'm reading the words in the shadows the sun and the moon marches on I've worked in the fields by the graveyard I've given it all I have to give I look at the names in the graveyard do we all deserve to end up just like this it takes a year and a day to make you come and stay fill your heart with joy see by see carefully find your happiness in every day find your happiness in every way I dream harvest fair The ravens and crows play together On fences all tattered and warm As I work till dusk in my cornfield The crickets keep me moving on It takes a year and a day To make you a come and stay Fill your heart with joy See by see carefully Find your happiness in every day 
find your happiness in every way Sun and moon cross the sky, midnight to noon. Yet a year and a day, yet a year and a day. Now the harvest is laid across the table, across so much that it falls to the floor. My hands run a great satisfaction, and started all over once more. Such a lovely telling. I do so enjoy the cemetery imagery. Satisfaction for a job well done, I say, with your final resting place right there to be seen. I commend farmers, such workers, never ending work, bringing joy to all and full bellies. Well done, yes, well done. She shared, still tapping her toe to the bouncy beat of the song. You seem to be a farmer, I commented. She considered this, and nodding her head, Well, so I am. Yes, so I am. What is your work, love? She asked me with a gentle smile. That made me think quite a question. I sat in silence, following the flow of my thoughts. My mushroom gardens, by the way, off the beaten path, winding where one wants to go. She motioned to a tunnel to the left that I had not noticed before. It was lit with an amber light shining from beneath the many mushroom caps growing along the twisting path going so very far into the distance. This is a place of dreaming. Songs, memories, guidance, easily experienced by a little nibble of my darlings. Try one. She pulled the most tiniest, littlest mushroom from her pocket and offered it to me. <gasps> oh, no, no, thank you, no. My imagination does serve me quite well, as it is. I responded, holding up my hand, waving off her offer, just a bit curious, though, as we all have heard of those kinds of mushrooms. Perfectly safe. I've been doing this work for, for centuries, I believe. Yes, that seems correct. I must say, I am content here with my purpose. It feels so good when one finds their inner work. Sheer, pleasant happiness. So very nice, love, she said as she stopped and gazed thoughtfully into her past. Wandering way-shower, I whispered. I knew you did know your work, love. I knew it, she said with a most infectious, endearing smile. Honestly, pleased for me, and gave me an affectionate squeeze to my arm. Her smile being so irresistible that I couldn't help grinning broadly with her. Yira, it's the rune of a year and a day. I mused, thinking of the song we had just heard. Yes, the wheel of the manor spins with strength for us who live here. She smiled again, and that comment caught my interest. I have met so many here in the manor but most dwelt within the story they told. She seems so different. Are you a ghost? May I ask you bluntly? I asked, feeling so comfortable within her presence. 
I had no concern to hold back my question. She smiled at me again, covering a giggle. <laughs> Does it matter? Think of where you are in the cellar of Gorsky Manor with magic mushrooms and an odd old woman. <laughs> you are not odd, but I do see your point. I nodded, feeling a bit silly. I guess I was hoping for an another human companion, like myself. She gave me a very sympathetic, knowing look and patted me on the back. That felt very unsettling. But I didn't want to ask that question about me. You are doing what you need to do, she said lightheartedly, trying to ease a heaviness I could slowly feel come over me. How brilliant you work! Wander, discover, uncover, and show the way to others. So simple. Yet mind-blowing, lovely, my love. Are, are you enjoying the manor? I picked up on her 1960s hippie reference. Oh, yes, though I was expecting something a little more spooky down here, I admitted. Really, love? Do you really want that? You don't appear to be that type. Yes, uh, she read me like a book. Well, maybe not that scary, I admitted. Fun scary, perhaps. That I can attest to. Plenty of that here in the manor. There is so much more for you to wander through. Why did you say you were me before, I asked. She looked at me again always weighing what she was willing to share. Then she said, I came to the manor, as you did. We all do. Find ourselves at the gate. No memory of how we got there, yet wanting to come in, looking for our special place where we are welcome. She explained as I saw one tear trickle down her cheek. I went over to her and gave her a big hug of understanding, feeling so close to her. One thought for you, love. Don't give away everything. Keep some for yourself, or at least sit with it for a time. She gave me a big hug back, and a kiss on the cheek. I understood that so strongly. I often can't wait to share what I have discovered. Dear listener, please don't fret. I will always share freely with you such blessings you share with me through your companionship. Sometimes the tale does not go where you expect it to go. Actually, truly, really, probably, most often, that happens. When I spoke those words at the beginning of your time here with me, they were appropriate. We are kin through our ancestral line, but then the tale changed. It is like smoke in mirrors. We see and know things Yet spirit magic continues to flow and changes what is shared. Trust in the knowing. All will be fine. Thank you very much. May I ask, what is your name? Oh, you may, love. Yes, you may. I appreciate you asking again. Just call me Hester. Oh, a most wonderful witchy name. I said, with honest pleasure. Your name rhymes with my witchy name. How cool is that? I know. Groovy. She smiled with pleasure at my pleasure. We be all farmers of a sort. Nurturing, caring, growing our crop, whatever it be. 
cattle, pumpkins, children, knowledge, personal gnosis, or mushrooms. I jerked to attention when she mentioned personal gnosis. I could see her knowing those words would reach my heart, as that is what I truly seek. I do so love your mushroom garden here, beneath the earth, beneath the manor. Stay a while, love. Help me pick the crop, she invited. Your companions await you at the end of the trail, she said, pointing the way, knowing that I have been concerned about them. They are patient and will be there when you need them. Feeling a change in me, she pulled the little mushroom from her pocket once again and offered it to me in silence. <gasps> Shall I be brave? Mm. Take a chance to experience something so different, something I would never have thought to experience. I rejected all my fears and warnings, trusting in her and the manor. I accepted the mushroom and took the tiniest, teeniest bit of the mushroom. Its taste was nothing I have ever tasted before. I have no words to describe it. At first, nothing seemed to happen. Then, there, sitting upon a large mushroom, guitar in hand, sat a young girl, long blonde hair, clothes I remember so well from the sixties, and she began to sing. Blessings and hugs, dear listener.